I thought my job is easier given I just need to say Amitabh and I have their attention, but then I realized how do I address questions to each one of them, right? I thought of many things. I thought uh, Amitabh, uh, maybe surnames, uh, but I'm probably not as close to them to say Mishraji and Pandeji. Uh, then I thought of, okay, let me think about this. I'll maybe call them senior, junior, but I don't want to walk into this trap of deciding who's senior, who's junior. Uh, and then I thought uh, maybe I'll think of where they come from, yeah? Uh, one comes from uh, Dr. Reddy's laboratories and the other one comes from the Agio, so maybe uh, Dawa Wale, Daru Wale, <laughs> but then uh, sounds a bit odd, right? Uh, <laughs> so, so I know that uh, your name uh, is inspired by the Amitabh Bachchan. So maybe I call you Amit Ji, yeah? And we'll stick with Amitabh here, yeah? <laughs> okay. We're sorted with the names now, so maybe we can get started with the topic. I think uh, if I really step back and think of, um, you know, how do we take ownership of the rise and shine culture, maybe we'll start with you, Amitabh. Uh, how do you think uh, we're going about uh, doing this with our teams today? This is really like a fireside chat. There are only a few people around in the audience, so it's be nice and cozy. So, uh, um, so maybe just to, to get started, and I was thinking about this over overnight, because literally overnight, uh, was, um, I said, two parts. There's the rise and there's the shine. And then I got, I started thinking. Um, so rise, I felt, I just I started splitting it apart. You know, all, all, all planning and insights people, right? We have, we have to do this, like start teasing it out. So I said rise and shine. If I split them out, what do the two kind of bring together? So I was thinking what we're doing in, in our organization and I felt rise is about people and purpose. And then shine is about the tools and the work and the methodologies and everything that you do. Um, and what we seem to be, uh, what at least we're trying to do more actively, more consciously, and more consciously, I think in the last couple of years than, than before, has been on the rise side, on the purpose side, we've kind of spent a lot of time as an organization defining our purpose in the last two or three years, what do we stand for? And especially coming from the industry that we do come from, it's even more critical. It can't be just about selling the products that we sell, quite the opposite. What, what is the larger? And I think lots of organizations have gone through that. And then the second bit was, uh, was people. And one of the things, and some of my team members are here, um, one of the things that consciously, at least from a planning and strategy and insights point of view that we're building is people above business. Because if, if you're kind of working through the people, the rest follows. Because by and large, we're all, this entire community is a, just a, generally a good bunch of people who want to do good stuff, right? So I think they just need to be enabled. So that was the rise bit of it. And then on the shine bit of it, I think just a couple of tools and stuff that we've been actively investing in. We've like spent a lot of time investing in a structured way of doing foresights. I know Ashwat talked about insights to foresights and he gave some tips and tricks yesterday. We've had a slightly different approach where we've actually built a body of work of of like structuring what foresight so that we're looking ahead a little bit. Uh, and therefore some of the themes that we're kind of working on like DEI or responsible drinking or sustainability, I think comes from kind of just seeing that because it's not just, we, it's not just about doing good, it just makes business sense. So I think foresight we've been investing in, we've been spending a lot of time obsessing about performance uh, over the last couple of years, why something is working and why something is not working. Again, that the power of understanding performance and the why is kind of really unlocking a lot of stuff that is helping us to look above and kind of do the shine bit of it going forward, yeah. That's fantastic. Thank you for putting that framework for us uh, uh, about people, purpose uh, for the rise bit and the tools and techniques for the shine bit. Uh, over to you, Amitji. Yeah, <laughs> so uh, see, we come, we as a Dr. Reddy's are a responsible industry, the pharmaceutical industry. So it's all about being patient-centric. And Dr. Reddy also talks about good health can't wait. So that is the purpose of Dr. Reddy's. And I always tell my team that we are the representative of consumer on the table, consumer and the customer. So it's not about selling products to the anything like a, a normal FMCG product to the consumer. It's about finding a solution, unmet need of a patient, and how do we do that? And hence, Manish yesterday talked about be curious, be observant. So a good insight person has to be a curious, a bit observant. Uh, and I tell my team, never worry about failing. Because if you won't experiment, you uh, and if you experiment and you fail, it's good. Learn and then do it again. Uh, 
and the observant part I already talked about. So this is, and I'll give you an example uh, of what we did. So uh, we had a, we were, so look, we look at a prescription data and all, and we realized in dermatologists, we see lots of, uh, of patients who are diabetic. And we were trying to understand why this is happening. So we looked further and we realized they are going for an itch solution. So we tried to understand why a person is going to di uh, a dermatologist for, and he's a diabetic. So we tried to understand, read the literature, understand that, you know, there are, uh, there's a very high correlation between blood sugar shooting up and uh, itching. So then we, uh, but in, then we did a study among, and which is called knowledge, attitude, and practice, which is similar to your UNA, but among doctors. And we realized 90% of doctors were not aware that there is a correlation between itch and diabetes. And hence, then we came out a solution saying that as a diabetologist, talk to your patient about itch. And this, in a way, we uh, met an unmet need or uh, underserved need of a uh, patient. So this is how I keep my time, be observant, notice uh, why some data is why, why. So question why, always. So that's one of the ways we are doing uh, how you can say rise, shine, or how being consumer-centric kind of thing. Thank you, Amitji. I think the perspective on giving your team the space to experiment, uh, even fail, and then learn, um, and of course, uh, being curious and you know staying ahead of the curve. I think that's that's again a wonderful way of describing the rise and shine culture. Uh, I would like to extend this and really uh, you know pause and think about how are we doing this for our agency partners because I think uh, there is a certain uh, level of control we have when it comes to our own teams. But uh, uh, you know when we think about agency partners who we collaborate with on projects or uh, on work streams, how do we go about doing this? And I would like you to maybe ponder upon how do you de-average this for say established agencies versus the new age uh, agencies that we partner with? That's a really good one. I think that that is harder. You're right uh, because it's an it's an environment and an ecosystem that we don't control control directly, unlike our own teams. I think two or three things, I, and I think it's a journey. I don't think we've cracked the the code um, completely. And for the agencies that work with us, I think you uh, probably feel the same or or differently than share with me. Um, I think one of the things is that internally we try to spend a lot of time on writing the brief. I think that's a discipline that we started. I think we weren't very disciplined about writing good briefs. And I think uh, that's one thing that we are spending a lot more time on. So we spend a fair amount of time going back and forth on writing the briefs so that we're asking the questions that are new. So that we're giving the agencies a chance to answer the new questions, not the same old, same old. So, so just garbage in, garbage out. So I think right. that's one of the things that we're doing, which is on our side to enable the agencies then to do that. The second thing that we're uh, trying to do is, um, is doing multiple rounds of deeper analysis on the same data. Because I think one of the learnings is that we are like living in a data-rich, insights-poor world, uh, which was the opposite 20 years ago or 25 years ago when some of us started our careers where we didn't have data. I mean, like now it's the opposite. We've got so much data that we don't, uh, uh, don't know what to do with it. So I think that's the second thing that we are doing. And I think that we've seen really helps. We see the agency suddenly rising up. Oh, okay, here's a an, an further analysis on the same piece of data, and I think that. So those, those are two things that we are trying out. One, at discipline at our end, write better briefs to ask new questions to get new answers. And the second one is uh, to uh, get to next level of analytics on the same piece of research, same piece of data. Wonderful, wonderful. I think uh, some of these uh, things are foundational when you say writing a brief, etc. I think these are literally the first things we've spoken, you know, we, we speak about, but often in our... Uh, daily humdrum, we tend to sort of lose uh, sight of it. But I think w really the foundational job of writing a good brief, and then secondly, of course, uh, following it through with the analysis and with the extra data. That's wonderful, Amitabh. Thank you. Amitji, over to you. Uh, what are your thoughts? Uh, so long back when I used to be with Nielsen in agency days, I used to think the real work is done by the agency people and not at the client side. Because as an agency person, I used to you know, look at the data, make the presentation, give the insights, all of those things. So I thought the real work is being done by agency. I still believe that. So yes, as a client, we can provide a brief, we can be very 
particular about what we want to know and we challenge our marketing team when they are writing the brief saying that what's exactly you already know and get validated what new thing what you want to know don't go with everything because everything cannot be uh, you cannot get from the one uh, so uh, one of the things which we do is uh, while uh, we, we work with very few agencies couple of two three because the more work i do with they they understand my business i have a people dedicated on my account and one of the things which we have done is like the rate cards and all because now no negotiations of rate cards so you know you got the project now deliver the best and the person who has worked on my account for four five years know how and we have a bit healthy sometimes fights also but it's not personal it's professional because you have to challenge your agency have you done enough do you give me more kind of a thing because today uh, i think agility is very very important in business no longer four five six weeks to get a research result so you have to challenge them and uh, most of the time they also rise up to the challenge they also try to help you the best way they can because they also trying to see as a researcher they also trying to do the best they can give it to you give to you so i think it's both collaborative working uh, you know uh, calling them in and i remember hul we used to do uh, agency day where we will get them to a place the whole day we spend with them so those are the thing where you show appreciation to the agency you can if a project was done well you write a mail to the ceo saying that you know this was what was done and we really appreciate those things not always complaining mail Uh, so that's how i think uh, we collaborate with uh, agencies fantastic uh, thank you so much amit ji i think uh, uh, just when you speak about you know how appreciation goes a long way i think i truly believe in that and thanks uh, for reminding us all that uh, i think we know how appreciation motivates us and i think we can spread that someone spoke about uh, you know a pebble and then the ripple effect i think we can be the ripple effect and ensure that we keep uh, each other motivated uh with that i think i'll i'll start with you this time amit ji uh what are the most important qualities uh, uh to develop or behaviors to encourage i think you touched upon a few uh but if you could just specifically go on the qualities and the behaviors to encourage to uh to you know sort of build this as a culture not as just not as just a mere ideology but a true culture that we live and breathe yeah so uh, one uh, and again this is my learning from hul meet your consumer every day if not every day every week It's because you need to understand what they are trying to say because that's what you build so be meet your consumers always your customers always that's one thing the other thing which i uh, tell people is keep updated with the industry trends market attend mrsi annual seminar <laughs> get to know plug, guys <laughs> <laughs> get to know what's happening in the business i tell them don't try to be a domain specialist be insight specialist don't try to say i'm a banking guy i'm a fmcg guy i'm a pharma guy you are a insights guy uh, and uh, you have to get insights uh, again analytical skills is again a required for a uh, insights person because if you could not analytical then uh, communication skills again you need to communicate what you are trying to say and you need to be very sure of what you are saying and uh, don't bluff around kind of a thing so say what it is even if it's a uh, bad news tell it because if we don't tell it then nobody else will tell the organization uh then i said open to learning and feeling and one thing which i thought really worked for me in life is have a mentor somebody whom you can go to at any point of time say that you know i have this problem how can i you know overcome this so having a mentor really works so these are the few things which i thought has worked for me and this is what i try my team to also uh, do wow thank you for sharing thank you for sharing that perspective uh, and we move to you amitabh for your thoughts on the same thanks you pali i'll take another sliver of saying how do you build the rise and shine uh, culture i think uh, amit ji <laughs> amitabh you did a great job on saying what what defines a good insights person maybe i'll just build on that and saying from there what can make a good rise and shine uh, people and what qualities and behavior so i'll just take that sliver to it i think two or two or three things in my mind one is i think um for, i think for all of us as uh, in the room to define for ourselves where do we want to be do we want to do we want to be 
the person who is a result of the past or do we want to bet on the future? I think that's a choice. Um, and I think some people, and, and it's about knowing yourself. If you are in the former, just acknowledge it and then be part of the bandwagon, helping the people who are betting on the future to, to let them drive the agenda and then you follow. Or if you are the, the other person who wants to make the choice of I want to live in the future, then rise and shine, right? Because <laughs> then, uh, uh, because truly, I think, um, I genuinely believe this, that uh, the industry and the world needs a lot of people who are betting on the future and not, uh, not, not kind of perpetrating the past. I think we are at that point. So I think one is that. I think make the choice for yourself, being true to who you are, and then kind of make a choice, either the future or the past, and then uh, join the cause. Uh, the second one is, um, is, what increasingly I think I'm trying to practice is uh, multi-source uh, information. I think that's something where, which is becoming so critical because these days, if, it, I don't know if it's, if, if it's happening with you, everything that I read, I have my antenna up. Uh, is there an agenda, not an agenda? Is this real or not real? Is there, so I've always got, you know, so, so the way I'm kind of working towards, uh, around it and therefore in the team and in the agencies and everybody is saying multi-source. You know, so uh, read a read a left wing paper and a right wing paper and a center paper. You know, read uh, do Insta reels, but also do uh, you know listen to BBC news. You know, just go to a diverse multi sourcing of information is the other bit, and that seems to be helping, or I think is helping. So those two things: choice, future or past, to multi source. Lovely. Thank you so much for building on uh, you know some of the stuff that uh, Amiji also spoke about. And, uh, you know, if I really think about it, I think the intent is all there, but there has to be something that stops us. And if I really, uh, you know, want you to th tell me the one thing that you believe, according to you, is stopping us from getting there, what would you say uh, that is? Yeah, that's a tricky one. I was really thinking about when, when, when you sent this this morning, I was like on the drive, I was thinking, what is really stopping us? And you know what came to me was this, uh, I, I, I know there are other music fans, I'm a huge music fan, one of the bands that I follow is One Republic, there's a song Counting Stars which is very popular, they performed at the Lola as well. Um, and um, uh, there's this line in that song that says, uh, uh, I don't think the world is sold, we're just doing what we're told. And I just, that's like the best line in the entire song, the rest of it is about, okay, dreams and blah, blah, blah. And, I, and that's I think what my answer to the question is, I don't, I think it's because we haven't, uh, we're just doing what we're told. A lot of us are just following, and we haven't really stopped to just step back and think, oh, is this or not? Oh, just take a moment of pause. So I think it's that. I think that's what's stopping us. It's not that, that we don't want to or that, not that we can't. I think it's not a capability issue. I think all, everybody in this room, all of us are more than capable. I think it's just that we've just not stopped from that treadmill to, and we're just kind of perpetrating that. I think it's that. It's just that, I think. Interesting. Uh so there is really nothing, uh, as you say, it's, it's really a choice that we make. And Amiji, your perspective? I think uh, what stop is us, we ourselves are stopping us. Selves. So we say that this is a methodology which has worked. So we will follow this methodology only and we will do this only and we will get this only. So that is one we say we follow this, let's be safe and do the same thing which we have been doing for many years. The other thing is uh, a research which has failed and you will say, now this didn't work, I will never do it again, kind of a thing. Maybe both are good in some senses, let's say if you are doing a brand track, then stick to what has been doing, working, and keep on doing it. I, but even in brand tracks, now lots of things have improved and gone ahead. So I think what is stopping us is ourselves. If we are more curious, if we want to experiment, there's nothing which is stopping us from doing that. So. Apart from ourselves, I don't think anything else is because sometimes, yeah, fun, or money, or time might be a constraint, but those also can be overcome. But your mindset is what you need to open. Okay, and I'll, uh, I'll uh, just uh, request Amiji for you to really think about this in the context of agency partners. Mm -hmm. What do you think is stopping them? And I heard from both of you really saying that there's really nothing stopping us. But if I were to extend this, and you know, sometimes we see frustration building at both ends. What do you think is stopping uh, the agencies uh, uh, at this? Agencies guys are now turning into business development managers. They are more interested in getting more business and the pressure from up is so immense of them. 
that all the senior resources, and this is something which I have seen over the years, that all senior resources are much more involved in getting more business, developing more, uh, uh, you know, getting more revenues, than actually delivering uh, value to the client. Because your young researchers, yes, they are enthusiastic, but the only senior person can add a value, add insight, because they know the industry, they have been there, done that, they can add value. But more and more I'm looking at them and I'm realizing all of them are into, and this is what one thing which I don't like with the agencies, that okay, if you do good work, you will get the business. But don't like every time just say, okay, can we get more business from you? Can we get more business from you? That's, I think if you do have a value, you will get business. But that's one thing which I think, uh, I really think is stopping agencies from, from going good to great. Thank you. Thank you, Amitji. Amitabh, your thoughts? Yeah, I'm thinking about it. Um, I think it's, it's, it's getting the right people to work in the industry. Um, I, I mean, let me honest, right? There, there are some people who love research and there are lots of people who don't like research, right? <laughs> people who love research should work in research and insights and planning. People who don't like research should not work in research. And I think maybe, maybe, it's, maybe it's that because there is a cert there's a certain kind of people that get attracted. There's a certain, all of us, many of us, right? And many of us old school who have kind of been here <laughs> for as long as we have. We enjoy doing this, right? And there are a lot of people who don't enjoy doing this. Like, like my, like my son, I have a, uh, an almost 18 year old son. I like, he'll, he'll open a book and he'll get into some topic which I have no, and I'll get into it with him for hours and he'll like, dad, stop. <laughs> I, all I need to know is what I need to get 10 out of 10, you know, whatever it is. I just need to know the mark. He is not <laughs> meant for research. <laughs> I am. Um, so I think it's probably that, you know, I think maybe we're getting a lot of people who don't understand what is research, why should I choose research as a career, um, and, and therefore, perhaps that kind of stops us from getting the best that can. Because you've got a lot of people who are probably coming in, work for a few years for the money, move out, etc. So maybe we need to find. And I, I, I believe me, there are, I've met so many youngsters who you can see the spark uh, that they, they would grow up to be great research and insights people. Uh, but they probably don't have the guidance to or help them find it. So I think it's people. I think finding the people who love this and not have the people who don't love this. <laughs> so it's people and purpose again, I would say, in yeah, short. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so uh, uh, I would really then ask you, where do you derive your inspiration uh, to rise up, show up, uh, especially when the going gets tough? Yeah, so personally, personally, I'm very, uh, I'm, personally, I'm a very restless uh, and uh, constant, you know, live in a constant state of dissatisfaction with status quo. So that's, <laughs> that's this thing. So I'm like always, uh, so that's one, I think it keeps me going. It makes me miserable every day. <laughs> but, but I think that's one thing that keeps me going. So like, the minute something is done, I say, okay, it's not, it's not good enough. So I think that's one. I think one is just, this thing, the second one, is I just, um, I think actively make time to, um, uh, to immerse in the world beyond my everyday work. I think, and I've become just more and more disciplined about it. And the more I do, the more I find uh, that I'm kind of moving towards this rise and shine feeling. The more uh, this thing. So I think those two things that I'm doing, yeah. I think, Wonderful. top of mind, yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. So like I said, uh, we uh, want to solve patients' problem, and that keeps me going. And also, you know, how do I try something new? How do I deliver something new? When I came into pharma industry with this world, very, very less research being done. And because people will tell you India is a branded generic market, all medicines are the same, P doctors write only what they are paid to write. And all. But I realized, no, if we can differentiate between two shampoos and we can differentiate between two soaps, and those are also consumers, right? So doctors are also consumers. And hence, they might have a perception with one drug and other drug while they might be generic. And that is one thing we try to understand from them, again, from the uh, patient lens, like I said, what can I solve for the patient? Can I, let's say, give him a smaller pill, which might be easier to swallow? It's a small thing, but might work very well with the consumers who are very, very uh, scared of bigger pills. Lots of consumers will tell you, or patients will tell you, bigger pill, you know, this kind of thing. So those are the things, something small, sometimes big, and understanding that and solving those problems. That's one thing which uh, keeps me and in fact all the people in Dr. Reddy is going. Uh, so that's, 
And the other thing which I rem still uh, remember in HUL, uh, Unilever days is inspire, provoke, and bring transformational action, which uh, Stan talked about. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Amitji, for sharing uh, your thoughts uh, and what truly inspires you. I think uh, I have some stuff to take back uh, from, from, the, uh, from the two Amitabhs. Certainly your point on people and purpose and uh, the tools and techniques to really see how we can get ahead and how we can really, you know, get our leadership moment. And uh, Amitji, from you, I think I would definitely take back how as leaders we can make space uh, for people to truly experiment uh, because that's really the moment to shine and, uh, and stay curious always uh, because we're here to serve people as well. Uh, thank you so much, both of you, for sharing your thoughts this morning. And thank you, Shafali, for being an awesome moderator. Awesome. Thank Thanks, you so Shifali. much. Thanks, Shafali. Thanks, Amitabh. Thanks, Amitabh.